What size gaming monitor should I buy is a question lots of people will be asking themselves when in the market to upgrade their gaming setup, or build their first setup for that matter. Is a compact 24 or 27 inch design like this one right for you? Or instead, is a 32 inch 16 by 9 or maybe an even larger ultra wide a better bet for your config? In today's video, I'm going to be talking about just how you decide what size monitor to buy, a few things to consider, and helping you guys make a choice that will hopefully allow you to pick yourself up a new panel with ease. Let's do this. As with everything in life, this is going to be an area of personal preference, but that's not to say we can't help to guide you to make a slightly more informed decision. Really competitive gamers typically favour 27 inch form factors, as it allows in theory you to see more of the screen without having to rely so much on your peripheral vision. That makes spotting enemies peeking a corner in CSGO or Fortnite or Apex or whatever the FPS game is that little bit easier, in theory giving you a competitive advantage. A smaller form factor monitor is also going to have a higher pixel density too, making 1080p actually look okay. As soon as your monitor starts to get larger, getting that higher resolution becomes more important. But with bigger size definitely comes more immersion and better multitasking. For me, 32 inches is actually as small as I would go on a monitor nowadays. The 32 inch form factor can seem large for those used to smaller 24 or 27 inch panels. But actually, if you tile in two windows side by side when multitasking and getting some work done, or you're playing a game that's just that bit more visually appealing, like Forza Horizon 5, that larger screen real estate can be fantastic. And that's not to say that bigger panels are necessarily bad for first person shooters or competitive titles either. Take Battlefield 2042, with all the particle effects, on a smaller panel the game's just lost. That larger panel with a bigger peripheral fallout is much much better and more immersive for a title like that. But what about ultra wide? Because let's be honest, a monitor's size is only one thing. The form factor arguably dictates the space it's going to take up in your setup that bit more. Ultra wide monitors take the standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio and expand this out to 21 by 9, keeping the height proportions the same, but increasing the width proportions by around about 30%. This gives more room for multitasking, great for those looking to get some work done, edit a video, do a bit of Twitch streaming, but also of course allows for once again a more immersive gaming experience. Should you ever wish to play in that smaller form factor, you could play in windowed mode for example, but all that a larger ultra wide panel actually does is increases the peripheral vision range on the display. It means you actually get a wider field of view, the image isn't stretched, it's simply enlarged to show you areas you never thought you've seen before. One downside of an ultra wide panel, for those of you shopping on a budget, is that A they cost a little bit more, though we've got loads of affordable options available over on eBuyer, which we'll link below, but also of course you'll need a more powerful graphics card or PC to drive the monitor, as it will have more pixels. That extra width results once again in more pixels. If it had the same number as a 16x9 panel, the image would be stretched, and nobody wants that. But one thing an ultra wide can do really well is give you a higher visual fidelity without necessarily the trade offs associated with 4K panels. Let me explain. Now, a 4K gaming monitor is 3840 by 2160 pixels high and pixels wide. An ultra wide typically is 3440 by 1440. That's less than 4K while giving you a larger real estate and a much much better resolution and thus pixel density than 1080p. Typically if you're buying an ultra wide you want to go for 32 inches and this usually takes the place of two traditional 27 inch monitors. I wouldn't necessarily go for two ultra wides unless you're completely insane or looking for something that's really geared towards multi-screen use and multitasking. One thing to also keep in mind is if you're looking to go for a multi-monitor setup. If you are you might find the likes of a 30 2 inch panel to simply be too large, and 27 inches like this Asus ROG display makes way more sense. For me, the days of 24 and 21 inch monitors are over, especially for gaming, and I would certainly recommend 27 inches or above. 32 inch monitors are certainly the sweet spot, looking for those for a bit of multitasking room and a high level of immersion, while ultra wides take things to the next level in typically a 32 34 inch form factor for those looking for just that little bit more. Of course, you can also go crazy 
Acer do an insane ultra wide panel that's like 49 inches and Gigabyte recently released their gaming monitor slash TV. There's a bit of controversy over which category it falls in, but either way, it's a superb design that once again takes things up a level. The larger size of a bigger display can actually be offset through the use of a monitor arm as that will free up the room the stand takes, making its footprint feel that little bit smaller. Smaller 27 inch displays are more ideal for multi-monitor setups, while an ultra wide could potentially display place multiple of your displays at the moment to once again simplify things and provide you with a nice sleek upgrade. Buying a gaming monitor though is about so much more than size and we've covered this in more detail in a dedicated video over on the channel covering refresh rate, aspect ratios, input lag and all the fancy gaming terminology that you should also consider once you've settled on a size for your monitor. 32 inches is the size for me but what are you guys looking at? Let us know in the comments below or engage with us over on social media. Thanks for tuning in and as always we'll see you again soon here at eBuyer.